What's up guys, welcome back to a new guide. The new patch just came out and huge Pikachu buffs along with the new items. Pikachu actually feels really strong. So I was running the new cursed item. Um, I was also running Shedinja doll, but for you guys, I recommend Eject still feels better. I was just messing around with the new items, seeing what builds I could come up with. And what I came to was Slick Spoon, Energy Amp, and the new Curse special attack item it actually feels really strong on Pikachu because you can kill people on their pads. It reduces all healing, including Focus Band, which I think Focus Band as an item is a lot worse now because of that. So anyways, getting into the lane here. So I highly recommend only playing Pikachu in the bottom lane. I think it's really bad in jungle, really bad in top lane. And obviously your best secure there is going to be Spark, which I managed to help um, I time it with Jungle Book, who's on the Umbreon in my lane, and we get that farm. So we did lose the top Adino, you know, but we're doing pretty good in the lane. Uh, Jungle Book's going to distract them, and I'm going to try to get the mid Uh I'm going to Electro Web it in the bush. However, my rip is not that good, especially because of the build I'm running. So <laughs> if I was Choice Specs, I probably would have gotten that. But unfortunate, there are like a lot of games I played um, that I hard won the lane, but I do want to showcase games to you where the lane didn't go so well and you can still uh, fend off pretty easily. So you can see the Mewtwo gank our lane. So we're 3v2 now. And I managed to get like all the smalls there ju just by saving my thunder to put on bees when they got it to like half health. So that's a very common strat you can do. The, they rip the bees to half health around that. And you just put your thunder on, you're gonna get a lot of the bees, if not get the big bee as well. And I did leash the top right one. So uh, Jungle Book could immediately get four right after. Uh, in case he didn't get it on the bees, which is what happened. And we're just going to get the mid Audino. They didn't even contest. I'm going to be able to steal the top left with my Thunder. That's also something you can look to do on Pikachu. Thunder has so much range. So trying to use the, those ticks to steal this farm. And here, that's how you try to secure uh, with Thunder and Electro Web. Uh, it's the same concept with Thunderbolt. You put your Thunder for tick damage. Um, and then you try to time it with... Uh, your thing i didn't have thunder up there so it's unfortunate but um basically you just want to actually thunder into thunderbolt because thunderbolt has more of a secure it does more damage in one tick so you want to combine it with that tick damage to use thunderbolt to try to last hit um but there are going to be exceptions to that so uh, anyways though before i get into that they actually try to crash with five people bought if you see on the mini map and I do use my abilities, but that's all I can do. I managed to secure that farm, but they are going to get a lot of scores because they crashed five-man bot um, just randomly. But that means our top lane got really ahead because they just weren't top. And they're going to respond by us sending five people bot. And since we're so ahead, we're just going to utterly destroy them. And yeah, we're just going to break the pad here. I always recommend breaking the pad on ladder, really. Uh, once you get more into competitive... Um, it's not going to be as good of a play, but especially because in solo queue, like, your randoms are probably going to cap with, like, a worse overcap or just not even score their points. So it's just better to break those pads always, really. Um, that's my philosophy on it. I know some people might disagree with that, but obviously that's not something you do in a tournament, per se. But I think on ladder, it's just the best practice because never trust your randoms is what I've come to expect. And... Now we are going to try to play flat fast. The biggest thing you want to do here is play fast. So I just instantly rotate top. I hit a five man stun into a five man unite. And that's going to let us get a huge overcap on this top zone. And the Lapis does manage to stop it, but they cannot stop it anymore. So again, you saw me instantly rotate top. I ignored all the farm up on the map because uh, at this point, the thing is, they're missing all their Unites. If you look on the left side, you can see all their levels, right? They're missing all their Unite moves. So you want to use your Unite move in because your Unite move is the strongest move in the game. So you want to play fast, as fast as possible, so we can actually push this Reggie into the second tier uh, when they don't have their Unites. You can see they only have one Unite still. And what I did here is you can see I went to the Bees and I just farmed the small Bees and I scored. And what that allows me to do is I already have my Pikachu Unite back. You can see. So because I just instantly went to do that, I have my Pikachu Unite back. I'm just going to hard pressure the pad. And I'm just going to Unite them in their Speed Flux. You can see you're running into their Speed Flux and scoring. So that is how you play fast. You can see they only had one Unite move to defend. I managed to get my Pikachu Unite back. So we got 
we had a lot of Unite moves, and it's going to be really easy to pressure if you play fast. That's the biggest mistake I see a lot of people make, like especially solo queue teammates, is they don't realize how much of an advantage you have at that 7 to 6 minute mark when you're ahead as a team. That's the easiest time to pressure when you're ahead, because uh, you have the Unite move, which is like 10 times stronger than any other moves that you can have, and the enemy team doesn't, so it's the best time to pressure. And you can see, I'm just trying to go farm, try to get my Unite move back. That's what you want to do on these Pokemon that have really fast Unite moves, is to try to cycle your Unite moves well. So, after using your Unite move, try to farm as much as possible instead of fighting. And I'm just going to rotate up to this top path and Unite again. And I'm going to take down the Lapras, I believe. I do should end it all there. And I do unfortunately go down, so... A little bit of misplay. Again, if I had eject button, which I recommend you guys go eject, not shit injured at all. Shit injured all is pretty useless. I would have lived. Um, the one thing I learned about these games is shit injured all is utterly useless on Pikachu. Pikachu. So when you run eject, you can actually a uh, unite move into eject button, and it'll be uh, really good because a lot of people like to run away when you unite move. So um, you can just make sure your unite move follows them the whole time because you want to get the whole span of unite move on. So, here after respawning, I'm just going to rotate over to get these bees to get my Unite move back. Again, these Altarias, we call them bees because that's what they were on the last map, they were Um, These Altarias are key. You just want to go find them wherever you can. I have all the timers memorized. Um, If you want to know like a, a short guide to the bee timers, it's basically a minute 30 seconds, you'll see them spawn somewhere on the map. So, I'm um, starting at 8.50, then it goes to 7.20, blah, blah, blah. And you can see I'm just rotating up here with my Unite move. Playing it safe, though, because there is a Mewtwo. Just trying to poke out as much as possible and um, hitting the Mewtwo here. Mewtwo Y is so broken. I used my Shin Injured all here. This was good to block the Future Sight damage because he had a lot of built-up Future Sight damage on me. And I'm just going to keep chasing Again, I have the Curse Reduce Heal item, and it, it is actually so useful because a lot of people are running Focus Band, a lot of people are running healers. Even if they're not running them, being able to kill people on pad, that's something previously that only Delphox could do. So that that's uh, what Delphox was really good at, was pushing those pads, placing uh, Delphox Knight on the enemy pads so they can't heal. And now you can do it with any Pokemon, which is utterly broken. Especially Pikachu that has so much range, it just feels so strong. Because I'm basically, every time I put these things down, I'm putting like a mini Delphox Unite down. If you think about it. Like, this whole area is like a mini Delphox Unite. And to me that, it feels extremely strong. And you'll see here at the end, like, I still do insane amounts of damage. I was doing over 100k damage on Pikachu, even in the games that we lost. So, the Pikachu buffs feel really strong. Uh, paired with this new item, I think you can actually... I was one-shotting people through their focus ban, so I highly recommend you guys to try it out. It was really fun. Anyways, it's almost two minutes here, and we're just fighting in their jungle. My team hard in tier, so this is key. Uh, a lot of my team hard in tier, two people die, and you can see what I do. I stun, do a lot of damage, and I back up. The key is kiting out until your cooldowns are back up. Uh, that is the most important thing when you're playing Pokemon like Pikachu. The same thing applies to A9. So you can see that I did so much damage, I backed up, waited for my cooldowns to be back, and I made sure I lived because my, the rest of my team inted, but you don't want to follow suit. If I just ran in there like they did, tried to unite move, um, I would have died and it wouldn't have been good. But I hope you guys enjoyed the short Pikachu guide on the buff, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.